Hi everybody, this is Noelle from Petiti Garden Centers and we're here at Oakwood Village and it is mid-summer and the hydrangeas are just looking absolutely gorgeous. So we're gonna do a walking tour. We used to do this a lot in the stores where we would take all of our customers through and just show them the different types of uh, hydrangeas that are available out there. Gosh, when we were doing that, there weren't as many available as there are now. So um, we're gonna talk about five of the six uh, hydrangea families that we do have available today. The one that I don't have available to show you is the climbing hydrangea. They should be coming in uh, right around August or so, um, but we've got all the other families. So I'm gonna talk to you about the different types of families, what care they prefer, and kind of go from there. Um, right here you see beautiful uh, hydrangea hydrangea tree and the hydrangea trees are only the panicle hydrangea family. They are the most sun tolerant out of all the hydrangeas plus the panicle family blooms on all new wood every year. So these guys as far as the hydrangea families are concerned I feel are probably the easiest for your beginner gardeners because you really can't go wrong with them. Uh, the one up here is called Quick Fire. We love Quick Fire because it blooms early. Obviously, you can tell when it starts blooming, it is a beautiful white color. And then it will start to pink up. The pigments will start to come into the petals and you'll start to see it develop this nice deep pink color earlier than the fall. Most of your panicle hydrangeas will take on a blush to pink tone um, as they get more mature but quick fire really, really brightens up very, very quickly. So it's a, it's a really cool plant. Um, as you can tell, quick fire is kind of what we call a um, lace cap type panicle, where it does have the sterile big flowers, and then in between are kind of tiered with this, it also has the true sort of small starry flowers. So whenever you see a, a hydrangea that has that sort of lacy flower, you're always gonna see a lot of pollinators and there's a really cute uh, bumblebee on here right now. Um, but the, the, those small true flowers are really, really filled with nectar and pollen. So you'll always see the pollinators around them. As far as panicle hydrangeas are concerned, again, they're all the tree types that you see out there, but you'll also see the bush form. So I do have sweet summer down below. This is a beautiful panicle type. Um, these guys tend to grow right around the four to five foot mark, sweet summer does, and most of your panicle shrubs are going to grow vase shaped. So they kind of grow up in a V, if you will. They do get taller. Um, they are one of the taller varieties of hydrangeas. Um, so sweet summer. And then also look at this one. This is um, candelabra or lava lamp candelabra. Look at how long these flowers are. So there's probably a good 12, 14 inches of length on the flower. So you're gonna see a lot of different variety in the panicle hydrangeas. They do not change colors with soil pH like some of the others do. Um, so you'll see creams and whites, lime greens. Um, you'll also see a lot of variation as far as pink. Um, so they really are a great easy family. Again, part shade for these, four to six hours of sunlight, but you can go into full sun. Just remember to keep them moist. Behind me here, and I'm gonna move over just a little bit, I have two types of macrophylla hydrangeas, okay? We also call these mop head hydrangeas, but these two in particular are lace cap types. Again, they have the large petals. These are sterile flowers. And then in between them, they have these small little starry flowers in that flower head. And um, I'm gonna tell you, this is, this is a great one. This is called abracadabra. And really it has to do with how dark these stems are. And um, it's kind of like a magic wand, if you will. So they're really, really cool, interesting out in the landscape, really large, beautiful flowers. Again, this pink flower can be changed to blue. So the, the special thing about your macrophylla hydrangeas is they can have the color change. 
Um, pink is usually a higher pH or basic soil. So you would plant them in the garden. You would apply garden lime or lightning lime around them to sort of increase the pH or sweeten the soil. And then you would feed them with a neutral fertilizer. So something like Plant Tone or Miracle Grow would be great with these guys that'll maintain your pink color, okay? Behind me, I have Let's Dance Starlight, and obviously it is much blue, uh, a bluer color than the Abracadabra here. And what's interesting about this lace cap, again, um, great repeat bloomer, no problem with these. These newer varieties of macrophylla types um, bloom on old and new wood. And with Let's Dance Starlight, you can see that it's blue. So the soil pH that it was grown in was lower. So what you do is you actually apply aluminum sulfate in the soil to achieve a blue hydrangea. The aluminum obviously, um, you know, making that blue color in the petals. The sulfur is a soil acidifier, is a natural soil acidifier. So that's why you apply that around this one. And then you would feed your blue macrophylla hydrangea with uh, like a holly tone or an acidic fertilizer. So mirror acid would be that form of acidic fertilizer. And that's how you maintain the color on these. With both of these lace cap macrophyllas, they are um, probably three to four foot tall and wide in the garden. They are pretty sizable plants, if you will, nice and rounded forms. Um, what's nice about them here, again, is that they're repeat bloomers, but we always suggest that you protect your macrophylla hydrangeas in the winter time. So after the leaves fall off, if you can mulch them heavy with six inches of mulch, if you can wrap them in burlap or spray an anti-desiccant spray on them like Wilt Stop, all of those things are gonna keep the moisture in the stems and keep those buds for next year's bloom nice and safe, okay, and protected. So do watch that with your macrophylla hydrangeas, especially in Northeast Ohio. We got a lot of winter damage, a lot of cold wind damage where things desiccate. That's where the protection comes in and really helps you out developing better blooming for you in the next years. The other thing that I should mention is the pruning on these. If you are going to prune them for height and try to reduce their size, you need to do it in July. The reason being is the plant is going to start developing new buds in August and continue through the fall for next year. So height pruning, if you really need to reduce that size, do that in July before they start their new development. Okay, we're gonna keep walking. So this is actually the third family of hydrangeas that I'm standing by. These are serrata or mountain hydrangeas. Now, they do get confused with the macrophylla types because they do look very, very similar. But what the difference is with the serrata hydrangeas is that they are really, really cold hardy. So these guys grow in the mountains in Japan and they can really take a lot of cold temperatures, which of course we have. So the Serrata hydrangeas, you might hear the names Tough Stuff, Tiny Tough Stuff, Tough Stuff Red, just to give you the idea of how tough they really are out in the landscape. Again, with these hydrangeas, the ideal amount of sunlight is gonna be that four to six hours of direct sun. We consider that a part shade condition. Um, the tough stuff do prefer that type of condition, um, but you can tell here as you look over them, they do have that lace cap flower that we were just mentioning before. Um, lacy cap flower, they do have double petals where the sterile flowers are and then the true starry flowers on the inside. I like the Serrata varieties as well because they have a little bit more coloration to the leaves. They tend to um, get a little bit of a burgundy red um, coloring and shading um, even in early summer. So that's kind of a nice quality for them out in the landscape um, where the macrophyllas tend to stay greener longer. Some of the serratas will really sort of color up. Their foliage will look a little bit different. They do stay pretty compact. They're about three by three. Some of them can get a little bit larger, um, but they are really nice hardy hydrangea. 
and they do produce blooms on old and new wood as well. So you're gonna see some repeat flowering on them. I'm gonna move down a little bit. The reason being is you can see they can be pink or they can be blue as well. These are all tough stuff hydrangeas here, but we had them in different places in the farm. So some of them did turn pink, again, with that higher pH or sweeter soil. Some of them did turn blue with a lower pH or more acidic soil. So again, you can change the color on these like the macrophylla hydrangeas. This is tough stuff red, okay? So again, it's still in that serrata or mountain hydrangea group. You can see how compact they are. You can also see how bright or how deep the pink flower is. Now, when you have a deep pink flower, this one can also turn a deep blue color if you lower the pH and apply acidic fertilizer and aluminum sulfate. If you start with a pale color, you'll always have a pale pink or a pale blue. You can't get it to turn more intense coloring, if you will. So just be aware if you're trying to get your light pink hydrangea to turn a really deep, deep dark blue, usually is not achievable. But in this case, this will work. Um, a deep pink color can turn a deep blue color, okay? Over here, um, we have some really pretty macrophylla hydrangeas, again, or mop head hydrangeas. What's unique about these is these are called double delights. The double delights are actually a doubled petal type of hydrangea. So when you look at these huge flowers, all of them are what we call the sterile flower, okay? but they have double the amount of petals on them. So they're super, super showy. Um, this one's Freedom. And then we also have Wedding Gown here, which is, um, Wedding Gown is really pretty in the respect that it has larger petals on the outside and then it does have sort of a lacy look on the inside, but it's still a double flowering, which is really, really cool. So um, these again are the macrophylla type four to six hours of sunlight. Again, plenty of water. Um, wedding gown won't necessarily change colors for you, but you can have freedom change from pink to blue. So I wanted to show you some variations on the macrophylla hydrangeas. I've shown you lace caps when we had abracadabra and then let's dance starlight, um, the double petaled varieties and the um, Double Delight series, see I'm forgetting all the names. And then here, what we have, uh, these are newer. Um, this is Rhythmic Blue. So it's Let's Dance Rhythmic Blue series. And these hydrangeas we have found have performed really, really well, not only in the farm, but also at home. Uh, really, really large, true mop head flowers. They really are um, gorgeous. And what happens with these is, again, they're repeat bloomers, so you've got this is the old bloom from last year that was saved over on the stems. These are the new blooms coming out. So they are a true repeat performer out in the garden. And Rhythmic Blue is also extremely compact for a mop head family. Um, with these guys, most of your mop heads can grow three and four foot, you know, tall and round. Rhythmic Blue is gonna stay right around the two foot mark for height and about three foot when it gets full grown um, at maturity. So really nice, compact, tighter, smaller um, habit here, but beautiful, beautiful, deep blue color. So again, if you wanna turn this one pink, absolutely apply that garden lime, use your neutral fertilizer like plant tone around it and you'll get a nice deep pink color. Behind Rhythmic Blue, and, and Taylor's gonna kind of pan through, some of these are purplish in color. Again, the purple is achieved by just kind of finding that right balance between the pink and the blue color. So you, you have to do a little bit of experimentation, but gardening's all about experimentation. Um, behind us here, you're gonna see a really neat mop head family. This is called Bloomstruck. This is part of the Endless Summer series. And Bloomstruck, the flowers aren't as large, but boy, are they plentiful. So you can kind of look through this whole area here. I like Bloomstruck too. Look at those red stems, really, really neat 
kind of showy red stems, if you will. And then again, you have your blue to purple here coloration, but these can also be pink at times too. So just depending on what you want with your bloomstruck. But again, a nice repeat blooming variety, but very, very plentiful, very, very vigorous as far as um, growth habit is concerned. Another one in the Endless Summer series that's pretty new is called Summer Crush. This is the first year for this one. You can tell it's a little guy um, right now. Summer Crush has this deep, deep sort of um, pink, I don't know, a cherise color, I guess is what I would call this. Um, so it's really, really close to red, um, the where you'll find this in hydrangeas. Summer Crush is also a dwarf. So you're looking at maybe one to two foot tall and one to two foot wide. So again, newer varieties are really coming out with um, really tight growth habits, beautiful repeat bloom. So this is gonna get some more out there, um, but they really are a, a great repeat bloomer. Still remember, macrophylla types, do need that winter protection. If you wanna get the buds on the old wood blooming for you the following spring, and then uh, new will come out on top. What we're doing is we're approaching, where are we? We're on the fourth family, right? <laughs> right, Taylor? So these are oak leaf hydrangeas. Oak leaf hydrangeas are going to be your most shade tolerant. So if you're right on the edge of that four to six hours of sunlight and you're moving into three hours of sunlight, the oak leaf hydrangeas you're gonna be the most successful with. They do very, very well in wooded areas where you get some dappled sun throughout the day. And the texture of their foliage is really key here in the landscape. The texture is so bold um, that it just looks so beautiful with all your fine um, type foliage shade plants. So things like I'll put um, shade grasses like the Carex or the Sedges with it, or um, the Japanese mountain grass, the Hakanakloa grass. They're beautiful with a plant like this just because of the bold texture contrasting with the fine texture. Um, you'll see that their flowering is very simical, simical, similar to the panicle hydrangea where they produce a nice creamy panicle. Um, this is actually peewee, I believe, and peewee is one of the smaller varieties, but you'll see that it does have a little bit of lace cap flowering there um, in between the sterile flowers and then your true flowers inside. So look for these guys as far as really bold foliage texture. I, I love them. Um, I'm gonna tell you that oak leaf hydrangea um, are notorious for leaf spot. So you will see leaf spot, especially when you have a wetter season in spring, which we tend to do. So leaf spot on the lower leaves is not unusual at all. It's from splashing rainfall and it's kind of splashing and producing a little bit of fungal uh, disease that'll come up on the leaves, okay? But they grow through it and they do just fine with it, okay? Peewee, oh no, this is Ruby Slipper. So Ruby Slipper, uh, as you can tell, starts out cream and then will again deepen to that darker pink color. So Ruby Slipper is also available again with the oak leaf. Um, and I, I forgot to mention oak leaf hydrangeas, they produce the most beautiful fall coloring too out of any of the hydrangeas. So again, if you're looking for more of a fall show, this is gonna really produce it for you. We've got Gatsby series, the Gatsby series, Gatsby series is from Proven Winners. Gatsby Gal is a doubled flowering type. So again, um, Taylor will show you close-ups, but double flowering um, as far as the sterile flowers, they're double petaled. And then inside again, more of that lacy uh, true flower, if you will. We've got some pollinators out here this morning. Look at this. This is Gatsby Moon. Look at those huge flowers, they're like billowy clouds. So this one is all um, just, just flower. It is really, really big. So I, I love Gatsby Moon, it's real showy. We are on family number five as far as hydrangea, our hydrangea tour is going. And this family is really a cool plant. Um, this is our native hydrangea. This is actually called a smooth hydrangea or hydrangea arborescence. 
And just like the other hydrangeas, the ideal sunlight is at four to six hours of sunlight. These guys can take slightly more sun, if you will. Um, being a native, they're a little bit more adaptable to changing weather conditions and so forth, um, but they may um, get dry, dry, dry out a little bit on you and, and wilt. They will bounce back, so they're, they're pretty good as far as that's concerned, but still try to keep them in that four to six hours of sun. Um, with the smooth hydrangea, um, you're going to find mop head types. So they, they do look like a mop head uh, uh, variety. However, their foliage is a little bit different. Their stems are a little bit longer um, as well. So look out for these guys. This is Invincible Spirit 2. It is a pink uh, smooth hydrangea which um, up until, gosh, a few years ago, we didn't have any pink ones, it was only white. And with the Invincible uh, series, they've also come out with some shorter varieties, which I'm gonna show you right here. This is Limetta. So obviously really, really compact growing, um, much more of a dwarf variety, if you will. And Limetta has a beautiful sort of lime green coloration to it. And I really didn't notice this until this year, but it also has a little bit of um, showy kind of starry flowers on the inside. So true flowers on the inside of this flower head. So really great plants. What I love about the smooth hydrangea is that you can, they grow on all new wood or bloom on all new wood. So similar to the panicle variety in that respect. You cut these down, okay, in late winter, early spring, cut them down to, gosh, four inches, six inches, wherever you're comfortable. They will fill out and bloom and do everything that they're supposed to do with very, very little maintenance. You can't change the color on these, just like the panicle hydrangeas. There's really no color change, if you will, but just feed them with plant tone and iron tone twice a year, once in the spring, once midsummer, and they will be very, very happy. Hydrangeas, I forgot to mention watering. Um, for all of them, they like to be watered thoroughly and slightly moist, well-drained soil is always gonna be their favorite condition, if you will. So one inch of water deeply and thoroughly applied once a week, in the morning preferably, is always going to keep them very happy. When we get in times of drought during the summer, you will have to apply more water to them. They will wilt, um, you know, on hot, on hot, sunny, dry days. So just be aware of that. But other than that, the hydrangeas will do really nicely for you. Limetta is here again, compact. Behind me is Lime Ricky. So if you want something a little bit showier, a little bit taller, um, Lime Ricky is always a great one. And of course has that lime green uh, type flower. And then we also have Wee White over here. And Wee White is starting to take on a little bit of a blush peachy tone, which is cool as well. And if you look at Wee White, they start out um, nice and white, get a little bit of blush and also dry more of like a lime color. That's our hydrangea tour. We went over five families that we have here right now. Panicle hydrangeas, really great for the beginner, the most sun tolerant. They bloom on all new wood, so really pruning them late winter, early spring, pruning them down to basketball size. Awesome, they love that. Um, second family was our macrophylla hydrangea. The macrophyllas, there's so many different varieties. Um, key with macrophyllas, of course, is just make sure you're protecting them over the winter after they lose their leaves in the fall. Go ahead and wrap them, spray them with an anti-desiccant or mulch them pretty heavy so they'll be fine. Um, the other thing about macrophyllas is you can change their color from pink to blue. Um, so that's always something to consider out in the landscape. We also had the serrata or mountain hydrangeas, very, very similar to the lace cap varieties. However, they're very, very cold hardy. So winter protection is really not needed with those guys. Um, we also had, oh my gosh, came around the corner, oak leaf hydrangea, that's our fourth one. And oak leaf hydrangeas, I should have mentioned, very similar to macrophylla care. You do want to protect them over the winter. Um, 
and make sure that you're um, protecting those those buds that are going to develop for you next spring. They tend to grow and bloom off of old wood uh, more than new. So just be aware of that. And then of course the native, which is our smooth hydrangea or hydrangea arborescence. And again, these guys really don't have to do a lot with them. Just cut them back in early spring, let them fill out and they'll really be nice for you out in the garden. Enjoy.